Well, hello, I'm Josh, and I'm back once again with another great film to tell you about. And this week for Halloween, I thought, what better one to choose than Robert Wise's 1963 classic, The Haunting. The Haunting follows a group of people who stay at the 90-year-old Hill House to investigate the reported paranormal activity. The group is organized and led by an anthropologist, and the team includes the heir to the estate, Luke, a psychic named Theodora, and the main character of the film, Eleanor, who had an encounter with a poltergeist when she was younger. And that's really all you need to know. So the film The Haunting is based on the book The Haunting of Hill House written by Shirley Jackson. And even if you haven't seen The Haunting, you've probably still heard about it. Not only is the title used in some shape or form in tons of other horror films, but the story itself has spawned several other adaptations as well. One in the form of a very highly acclaimed Netflix series, as well as a somewhat less acclaimed 1999 remake. But the director of this film, Robert Wise, was actually a very successful filmmaker. And it was during this period of the 50s and 60s where he was really making some of his best films. I mean, he made classics like The Sound of Music, West Side Story, The Sand Pebbles. He got his start in the 30s as a sound editor, and he eventually moved up to be the film editor. And it was here where he worked with Orson Welles on his first two films, Citizen Kane and The Magnificent Ambersons. And as you can see, he eventually moved on to become a director as well. And though now he's known for much more prestigious films, Robert Wise, like many other filmmakers, got his start in the low-budget horror genre. In those days, he was making films for a producer named Val Luton. And though Val Luton is not really well-known nowadays, he was actually a very influential person in the horror genre. He produced some classics like the Cat People series, which later got remade in the 80s by Paul Schrader, as well as films like I Walked with the Zombie, Isle of the Dead, and The Body Snatcher, which was actually directed by Robert Wise. And so Wise actually saw The Haunting as somewhat of a return to form, calling back to his days with Val Luton. And one of the things Luton was known for was implying horror rather than showing it. In a bit of an exemption to the usual show don't tell rule you hear, Luton knew that the audience's imagination could conjure up much more terrifying images than what they could actually show them, kind of playing into the fear of the unknown. And so as you can see in The Haunting, Wise follows these very same principles. Despite it being considered one of the great horror films, there's actually no blood in it at all, and we don't even see any ghosts. Instead, Robert Wise utilizes the actors' performances, sound effects, camera tricks, and film editing to imply much more than what we are actually seeing. They can also still toy around with the idea of whether or not these are actual ghosts or if Eleanor is just having this mental breakdown that's being triggered by the house and the investigation. And you can actually see the opposite approach to this in action in Yandi Bond's 1999 remake. And then there they were utilizing CGI and all this new camera equipment and things to be able to show the ghosts in their various forms throughout the film. And though the effects were I'm sure pretty good for 1999, in 2021 they come off pretty dated. And since so much of the scariness of that film is reliant on these effects, the movie tends to struggle a little bit. Really creepy. But like I said, Robert Wise's version of The Haunting instead goes for the more implied atmospheric horror, and it still holds up, and it's kind of been cemented as one of the great haunted house films. Another thing I find interesting about this is you can really tell that Robert Wise was coming into this with a background as an editor. There are a number of sequences that just feel very clearly planned out and just how the shots are framed and how they are assembled together. One such being the doorway scene where it keeps cutting back to the individual people's reactions and then it cuts to different angles of the doors, each being from their specific point of views. A lot of people feel that if you've been a, 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 a bit of an editor before you became a director, you shoot less coverage, less film. Just the reverse, because if you haven't been an editor, you know how valuable it is to have all those various angles down in the cutting room, you know, so later on after you finish shooting, you have something to work with. So I think uh, directors who come from editing background probably tend to shoot more coverage, more angles than one that doesn't. 
The cast in this film is great too. You've got Julie Harris, Claire Bloom, Richard Johnson, and Russ Tamblin as the main four. And they of course are all perfect in these roles. The film is actually not an immediate hit when it came out. It didn't get bad reviews by any means, but it never really seemed to catch on until several years later. But of course, since then, many filmmakers and critics have considered it one of the great haunted house films, along with just being one of the scariest movies of all time. All of this, of course, making it a great one to watch this Halloween. It ought to be burned down and the ground sowed with salt. Well, that's about all I have for this one. If you want to watch it, it's available on all the usual streaming sites as a rent or buy option. And if you want to get it physically, it's available on DVD and Blu-ray as I have here. There's not a lot on it as far as bonus features goes, though there is a really great commentary track that actually has the full main cast as well as Robert Wise and the screenwriter Nelson Gidding. And that's really cool. You don't usually see the entire cast available for some of these older films. So I think it's really cool that they were able to do that. But yeah, that just about wraps up another great month of horror film recommendations. But I guess the main thing you may have noticed if you watch my initial plan that I made in the Touch of Evil video back in September, I guess released it early October, but I mentioned that I would have my short film out on October 31st instead of a, another review. And well, as you can see, once again, that did not quite happen. I knew I'd be kind of pushing it to get that one out along with three other videos. And so when uh, my schedule started changing and some work things came up, I realized that probably wasn't going to happen. So I'm still hoping to get it done within the coming weeks, but I really wanted to make at least one more film recommendation before October ended. So here we are. So now for the comment question, I'm wondering what is your favorite horror film? I know it's kind of a big question for some people, but it's Halloween, so you kind of got to go big for that. So put one or 10 or a hundred or however many you've got, down in the comments section below and start discussing. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to see some more of these. Be sure to keep watching movies and I'll see you soon.